So let's suppose we are given the following information and we want to use this information to calculate the magnitude of the gravitational field at the surface of A, the Earth, B, Mars, and C, the Sun. So we know the mass of each of our objects and we know the radius of each of these objects. And we want to use this information to calculate the magnitude of our gravitational field. Now recall the gravitational field is the same thing as acceleration. So what we're essentially trying to find is the acceleration of an object with some mass m close to the surface of our planet or star. So we have the planet with the radius r or the star with the radius r and we have the object found on the surface that has some mass m. So let's begin with part a. So because we're trying to determine our acceleration, that simply means that we have to use Newton's second law of motion. So force equals mass times acceleration. Now, the only force acting on the object is the force of gravity. So in part A, we're dealing with the force of gravity of the Earth. So we take the following equation and we equate it to mass times acceleration, where our acceleration is the gravitational constant g of the Earth. Now, this value is our gravitational field. So we have to solve for this gravitational field. And this value is the value of the gravitational force due to the Earth on the object with mass m. So the gravitational constant g multiplied by the mass of the Earth multiplied by the mass of the object divided by the radius of the Earth squared. Now, notice the m's, the mass of the object, appear on both sides, so we cross them out and we're left with this equation. So our gravitational field is equal to the constant multiplied by the mass, another constant, divided by the radius of the Earth squared. So we plug in our knowns, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 multiplied by our mass of Earth, which is given here. 5.98 times 10 to 24 kilograms divided by the radius of the Earth given right here in meters. 6.380 times 10 to the 6 meters squared, and we get the following result. So we get 9.8 meters per second squared, but because we're asking for the gravitational field, the, the units become newtons divided by kilograms, which is the same thing as meters per second squared. So this is our gravitational field at the surface of the Earth. What about Mars, part B? So the same exact step. We essentially start with this formula, but now instead of using the mass and the radius of the Earth, we're using the mass and the radius of Mars. So the gravitational constant divided, multiplied by the mass of Mars, multiplied by mass of the object, divided by the radius of Mars squared, equals uh, the mass of the object multiplied by our gravitational field of Mars. So once again, the m's cancel, and we plug in our values, and we get 3.71 newton per kilogram. So notice that this value is less than our gravitational field on Earth. And that means that if you are able, if you are walking on Mars, it's easier to walk and jump on Mars than it is on the Earth because our gravitational acceleration is less. What about part C? Let's find the gravitational field on the sun. So once again, the same exact steps, except now we replace our mass of Mars with mass of sun and the radius of the sun. So once again, the mass of our objects cancel. We get the following formula. We plug in our knowns, which are given right here. So the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the mass and the radius of the sun is uh, 6.955 times 10 to the 8 meters. So we plug these values in and we get the following result. 274 newton per kilogram or 274 meters per second squared. That means if we were somehow able to overcome the high temperatures of the sun, we would not be able to walk. In fact, we'd be squished and we'd probably die.